This week is an important personal milestone for me because I discovered something I call it the shoulder push. I will share with you and explain to you the reason and how I discovered this. So this is about relaxing. You have seen many of the Byron's demonstration and he stressed how important to relax your body. And I did believe him. People I know keep telling me I need to relax, but somehow I just couldn't. I didn't get it until this week. And now I look back, try to understand why I didn't understand at the first place. Most people would tell me, okay, it just takes years to practice. It takes months or days to practice, but I refuse to accept that. I firmly believe there's a quicker way to learn. So looking back, why I couldn't relax? I think because maybe I'm athletic. When I was young, I can run 100 meter like around 12 seconds and I can do pull up like 20 in one shot and I had a competition with my son do a hundred uh, push up in one shot I won the contest but that is something may not help you even if you are not athletic think about it as soon as you raise your arm like this your brain is telling you you're ready for something what is you ready for most likely you're tense you're trying to do something for example if i'm ready for a small class in my brain they will tell me it's better and not to drop it if you watch my the physiology of the brain you will see the area corresponding to the hand is very large in your brain and will tell you okay better not drop the, the glass now think about a, a person with more than a hundred pounds approaching you and you raise your arm of course you're going to tense because this is the human nature after many years of evolution your brain is telling you you'll get ready against that 100 pound person attack or defense so all your muscle has to work in a certain way to defend yourself so that is actually the problem so what is the solution we have a push hand push hand is about to use a hand push but instead of a push hand or hand push you have a shoulder push if you don't have a hand anymore you only have your shoulder to push you understand the relax much better so we decide we need to find a rule to reward the relaxation rather than reward the one use force so what is the rule so the rule is you don't use hand you just use the body you try to lean against each other and try to feel and that really actually works and not just me and also some other students tried and it worked well yeah yesterday we realized something very important if you reach your if you lift your arm it's very easy for you to have a tightened uh, shoulder so we are going to practice only instead of a head push but shoulder push like this so I really relax see he can push me a little bit but eventually I'm still okay so and the, the trick is here, if I'm a little bit lower in here, I can lift him. If I'm higher, then his hand can actually push me down. Yeah, like this. So I'm higher now. He can see, he can lift me like this. And if I same height, and I'm lower, if I'm lower, see, he push me like this. So this is a better pr a practice for beginners when you are unable to loosen your arms. The previous video, both my partner and I, we didn't use hand. We also did something we did even though we didn't show in the previous video, which was my partner was using his hand to push me, but I didn't use my hand. I was like... Uh, I put my hand back and I was so relaxed. In the end, he was so tired and I didn't feel much. So I was so happy that I really understand the, the relaxation. That's one reason. If you don't have a hand, you won't have the problem. If you practice with your hand, for example, you watch all the video, either you have too much force 
or you claps. In this exercise, when I didn't use my hand, I'm claps. I can, I don't really care. I claps and still work. So why we didn't notice this earlier? Remember, Master Byron had a demonstration that if he were a little kid, he he said, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. We all watched that video, but why we didn't have an immediate, explicit effect? I think the reason is we didn't schedule a practice. We thought we are, of course, we are grown up, not kids. So this time I scheduled. I tried this technique, and for other people, I was doing things very relaxed. Hand on them, and uh, of course I have to keep myself not fall. But in the end, all four of them were very tired, and now of course I was very happy. I really think I understand at least one thing this time. Another thing is Baron talk about you keep constant force while moving. How do you feel constant force? One is your arm, you feel it. Another thing better maybe is your foot. If you move your body, the first thing you feel actually is the weight change on your foot. You feel first before your hand. So one practice is like this, as Byron showed in his video, that you move from back and forth like this. So this is a constant force. Stand on one foot. Make sure that one foot is, has constant force. And then see one foot. That exercise is fine, but there's an alternative method here. It's probably easier for beginner. So you just backwards a little bit. Backwards, not back and forth, but rather consonant backward. So this is a practice of a consonant force. Larry is trying to transfer the force into one of his foot, and then he back backward and make sure there's always constant force on one foot and this a and this is a very good practice so you've seen the two examples one is a person go back and forth that's one example the other is uh, someone is backing away gradually so the key is you have a, a you direct force on one foot you feel on that one foot there's a constant force so what is the difference between the two the first one of course the teacher tell you what's wrong you know teacher can feed you force and tell you what's wrong but the second one has significant advantage which is the student immediately know something wrong the person doing the backward he recognized his own mistake right away because his root all of a sudden he lost his root to it's very easy to detect that mistake because when you when someone is pushing you you you're backing away and you lost your root out at that moment you know your foot is off the ground and there's no force so that's a very significant advantage the student can get an instant feedback this kind of example is really hard come by the large number of training method we have is for the teacher to detect the student if we can find a method the student can detect their own mistake that would be the best